Well, time to bring it on with the email questions that you all have sent in. And this first one, Pat, comes from Mary Beth, who says, as a new employee, I work with someone who doesn't acknowledge anyone before 7 a.m., even though his day begins at 4.30. Also, after completing one job, he requests the lights be turned off for, quote, quiet time. The employee has been here 20 years. I've never experienced a situation like this. The boss doesn't arrive until 9 a.m. Should I say something? You give so much great Christian advice, and I'd love to hear from you. Well, I, I think you might say suck it up and go ahead and live with it. I mean, what are you going to do? The guy is a little weird, but he's a daily worker. He comes in early. He works hard, and he wants to kind of chill out for a few minutes before he gets for the next task. Uh, so... If you don't like what he's doing, go to the lunchroom. Yeah. Go, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. what I would recommend. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't report him to the boss and make you look bad. Yeah. All right. Rejoice that you don't have to be there at that's 4.30. Right. That's right. <laughs> okay. This is Edward who says, I've heard it said that when you pray and talk to God, you do not have to be on your knees, head down, eyes closed to pray. I talk to God throughout the day, my work when driving, etc. But is it different when saying grace before a meal? Can you give thanks without closing your eyes and bowing your head? I don't understand the difference here. Please advise. I want to get this right. Oh, Jesus said, God is a spirit. They that worship him worship in spirit and in truth. It is the communion of your spirit with his spirit. It has nothing to do with the posture of your body. But really, what that bowing says that I acknowledge your sovereignty and uh, People kneel, they, they bow, and they do so to say, you are sovereign and I am a you know, creature made before you. Uh, <clears throat> but if you're driving the car, I mean, hey. Yeah, don't close your eyes. Yeah, don't close your <laughs> eyes, but keep driving. But uh, nevertheless, there's nothing. I mean, we, 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 we pray 24 hours a day. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Well, you can't pray without ceasing if you're on your knees all the time. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you, it's an ongoing dialogue between your spirit and the spirit of God. And don't worry about posture and what you do. That's not what's important. It's what's in your heart that's important. Okay, this is Florence who says, does God want us to take medication? I have a family always saying I need to take it, and they even think it's God's will. She doesn't say what her condition is. Yeah, well, I mean, you need to know what the deal is. I mean, a lot of times people are over-medicated. They're being prescribed stuff mm -hmm. that isn't good for them, and they know it's not good for them, and they don't want to do it. <clears throat> I'm one that comes a time you just don't want to take medicine. They give you, well, you take this. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. And uh, uh, we know what's going on in our body a lot of times more than a doctor does. Yeah. So you must take it. I mean, it isn't God's will or not God's will. The, the medicine that is given us uh, is a blessing. Mm -hmm. the, the medical technology is a blessing from God. Uh, but what is it? Mm -hmm. 90,000, what is it? 90,000 to 100,000 people die because of misdiagnosed medicine. Wow. And well, and then you have the, the issue of mental health as well, where sometimes you need to be taking medication to balance yourself chemically. And that's right. it's typical that people who suffer from that don't want to take it. Well, elderly people uh, who have a little dementia, that they forget what they're supposed to take. I mean, it's, it's too much, too complicated mm -hmm. but to say it's God's will you do it. I mean, that, that's... Yeah. You know, it's one of these tools that is made available to us to bring us to some health. But at the same time, <clears throat> a leave, extra strength, etc., cetera, uh, NSAIDs, these other things, eat your stomach and causes bleeding and people die because of prescribed uh, painkillers. Yeah, some of them over the counter. Over the counter <laughs> and people die. That's right. All right. What okay. This is a viewer who says the Bible defines Father God as light and as love. It's clear that he sees all things and nothing is hidden from him. But I'm wondering, does Father God have a face? Does God have features like we are made in his image? Well, when you saw Jesus, Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. And so uh, the father uh, expressed himself through his son, and he took on the form of a man. Uh, but he's a spirit. Uh, he's a spirit. And does he have a face? Uh, well, we have what they call anthropomorphic uh, things, uh, anthropomorphisms, that make us look like a 
you know, God has a face. His hand is mm -hmm. not shortened. Uh, his face is toward you. May his face shine upon you, that kind of thing. But uh, these are just expressions so we begin to understand. But Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have for all today, right. but thank you thank so you. much. Thank, and you. thank all of you for your questions. <laughs>